All right, so we got the flywheel off now and he ended up mangling up that pilot bearing. So we're gonna have to pull that out and replace that as well as everything else. So we'll go order a new pilot bearing cause I know he didn't get one of those. And uh, yeah, I'll show you a cool little trick to get that out of there with a uh, household item your wife might use more than you do. Welcome back. All right, so like we said in the last video, we were gonna go ahead and pull out that pilot bearing. I got a new one sitting right here and it's time to get the old one out and the new one back in. So how are we gonna do that? Well, they do make a little puller. Let me take you up here. So this is the bearing right here that we wanna get out. They make a little puller that goes inside and it spreads its little claws open and that's how you pull on it. But we don't have that tool, so what are we gonna do? Well, you can use a hydraulic method where you stick grease in the hole and you just keep packing grease in and then you stick a bolt or something in the center and push on it and it will hydraulically push it out. Another thing you can do, what we're gonna do because grease is kinda messy, we're just gonna use good old bread. So we got the crust here off of the end of the loaf of bread. What we're gonna do is stick it inside that hole there and like I said, we did this job last fall. So I have the old input shaft that he broke. I welded a bolt to it and this is what I was using as an alignment tool because I didn't have a 10 spline alignment tool. So what we're gonna do is use this since that bearing rides right here on this input shaft anyway. So we know it's a perfect fit. So we're gonna take the bread, we're gonna jam it up, stick it in that center hole there. We're gonna use this to push it in and then we'll tap on it with a hammer and boop, it'll pop right out. The bread doesn't leave any grease in there or anything that you need to get out. You can take a little screwdriver and just pick on it and it'll pop right out and you're on your way. So as you can see, we got the pilot bearing out. There's still some bread poking out of it there. And this is full of bread. So now what we're gonna do is take a screwdriver and stick it in there. We'll pull that bread out. I wouldn't recommend eating it. And we'll, uh, yeah. We're gonna use this old one as the tool. We're gonna hammer on this old one to press the new one back in. I'm about ready to start reassembling this little thing. All right, so we got the flywheel up on there. As you just saw, we just put it up in place. I put one bolt in it to make sure it doesn't fall off on top of my head. So now we have these little bolts here that need to go back into the back of the crank. We are going to throw some blue Loctite on these and then those get tightened to 64 foot pounds. So we're gonna take the um, bolts, we're gonna put them back in. I'll zip them down real quick with the uh, little baby impact just to kind of you know, get them seated. I'm not gonna torque them with that, and then I'll go grab my torque wrench. We'll put it on the back, crank them on. Right, so just like that, we got the bolts torqued there to 64 foot-pounds, and I left a little note for the owner. It says, don't hurt me. Hopefully he won't shatter this one. So you're here because obviously you saw the thumbnail and the title of the video, which is unboxing an RXT twin disc McLeod clutch. So let's go ahead and jump into it and uh, see what you get. So what we're doing here is we have a twin disc McLeod that's already out, which is also an RXT and we have a brand new one right here. Why did we take one out to put the exact same one back in? Well, this one over here is a 10 spline. So that's for a stock 4.6 Mustang in this case, which has 10 of these little teeth here on the input shaft. And as you can see, this is the second one that broke. 
because the owner makes way too much power and drives like an animal. So we are moving over to this one here, brand new in the box. Let me move all this stuff out of the way and you will see by the alignment tool that it has way, 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 way more teeth. This is actually a 26 spline. So the clutch is the exact same from here to here. That's a used one, this is a new one. But this one, if you look down inside, pull this out of here, you can see down in here all the little fine teeth and then if I pull this guy off, you can see this one has real coarse teeth because it's a 10 spline to fit that input shaft. So let's go ahead and pull this one apart. We'll compare old to new. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna go ahead and get the sucker in. So when you pop this thing out of the box, they give us two alignment tools. They give us some fasteners. And then this plate here, the pressure plate is already screwed down to this little disc and that disc is where the first one rides against the flywheel and the second disc there is up here on the top. So here's your first disc and it's just got all these little pucks here. Now this is not spring loaded, so it's going to be a little bit more aggressive on the starts. Um, you know you know how uh, like in a new car you can feather it real nice and try to almost not feel it as it engages. You will not be able to do this um, if you wanted a spring loaded, they would have springs that kind of sit like this around the clutch disc sideways and that kind of gets rid of that little shake to it. So this is kind of more like an on off switch, if you will, compared to a sprung clutch. So what we're going to do is undo these fasteners here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll be able to pull the pressure plate off, pull that top disc, and then we can go and get this disc here and this gold uh, intermediate disc, I guess you're gonna call it. Um, we're gonna get that and this installed on the back of the engine, and then we'll go ahead and get the top disc and the pressure plate itself put in. Now, this one over here, as you can see, it's all dirty and gross. This one only has, oh, look at that. Check that out. There's a chunk of the input shaft sticking out of the clutch disc. Um, so this one's only got, I don't know, uh, 4,000 miles on it, maybe a little less. But as you can see, it doesn't look too bad. So that top disc rides on this one, and then the bottom disc rides against the flywheel itself. So that's kind of how this new one is going to go. You're gonna have this clutch disc here, this guy there, you're gonna have the next clutch disc on top, and then you're going to have the pressure plate on top of all that. All that sandwiched together on the back of the motor. We are going to take the new alignment tool, and you run that down in here. Obviously this is the wrong one, but you run this down in here to make sure that this clutch disc the teeth here line up with the teeth on this one. So when you go ahead and insert that um, input shaft, it'll go right through no problem. So the goal of this would be to leave these six bolts around the outside here a little bit loose. You take this, you slide it all the way down until it goes easily in and out like this. You tighten those up. You check it again, make sure that that goes in and out very nicely. The more time you spend doing this, the easier it's going to be to be putting a transmission in the car. So you make sure you take your time and do this properly so you're not fighting with a 300 pound transmission trying to put it in. Um, all that being said, let's get to the install. All right, so it was real hard trying to get something to hold the camera and whatever, but all I did was take the, the new alignment tool here, slip that into the pilot bearing in the back of the engine, and you have one, two, three dowels right at the top that this gold plate slips onto. Now, McLeod does go and give you all new bolts, if you can see them here in my hand, 
and these go in to attach this gold disc to the flywheel. You only want to tighten these to 25 foot pounds and I always throw just a little bit of blue Loctite on there because you definitely do not want these coming out on you. So what we're going to do is put all six of these in. We're going to torque them in a star pattern. Um, I'll probably do 15 foot pounds, 20 and then 25, just to make sure this thing sits nice and flat against that flywheel. I definitely do not want to pull it one way or another since it has to go onto the dowels that are pretty far spread and you know, just better safe than sorry. A couple minutes extra here will save us a ton of headaches when we're trying to reassemble this car. So let's go ahead, throw some Loctite on and uh, done. Just like your engine, in case you didn't know, the rotating assembly, meaning the crankshaft, the connecting rods, and your pistons are all balanced. Since your clutch bolts directly to that crankshaft, it needs to be balanced as well. So, McLeod goes out of their way when they send these clutches out to make sure that it has a large mark on it which we have right here, this black line above my thumb. And that's telling us that it needs to line up with this black line and that black line. And when you line them up, that's how you get your balance. If you take this thing and you turn it 30 degrees, any direction or whatever, it's not gonna be balanced. You're gonna have a horrible shake and that's gonna be why. So when you go ahead to put this thing on, we are going to lightly slip it over the studs, minding. There's little baby shims, let me show you. There's little baby shims right back in there. And that shim is what holds the pressure plate in the correct spot. That shim is what holds the pressure plate in the correct spot so it doesn't pinch too hard or not enough. Make sure those shims are in there. Next thing you wanna do is you want one flat washer on the stud. You want one lock washer on the stud and then you want the nut so that's how they want you to put this thing together we are going to start this one there you go just a couple threads to make sure the pressure plate doesn't fall off on my head and we're going to go around and put all of them on to that point once all of them on to that point there we are going to Tighten them in a star pattern, again to 25 foot pounds, which is exactly what we just did down here. And then we are going to go and do another star pattern that's gonna take them up to 35 foot pounds. Once you're at 35, these nice lock washers that they have right here should be fully collapsed and you're ready to go. Now we have this thing torqued up. So what we did was we torqued these bolts to put this gold ring onto the flywheel. Those went to 25. And then we tightened these ones here above it that put the pressure plate to the gold disc. Now, as you can see, like I said, we have our black line showing that this is in the correct place. And this is a really good spot to see. So let me grab a screwdriver here. Holy. Okay, so let me grab this screwdriver here so you can see the first clutch disc right there. You can see that line right above, that shiny line right there, right above my screwdriver tip. That's the space in between the two clutch discs and you can see the back one. So that's what I was talking about earlier where you wanted those um, splines from the first disc to the second disc to be nice and in line. So what we do here is we take our alignment tool and we're gonna slide it through like this and it just goes, whoop, there you go, right in. So again, we're just gonna take it. We wanna make sure that it slides right in just like that and that's it. By, that, by this sliding in as nicely as it does, that means that the new input shaft, the transmission is going to be able to just slip in right like that and bottom out, which is gonna put the snout of it into that pilot bearing we did and it's gonna go through both of these clutch discs. So you can see how easy it is to slide in and out. That's perfect, that's exactly what you want. And as you can see, we have a little bit of grease there on the tip, which means it got all the way back into that pilot bearing in the back of the crank. So 
We are about done with the flywheel and the clutch install. I want to thank you for watching this video and hopefully you'll come back for another one. These McLeod RXTs are absolutely incredible. I try to put them in everything that I can that makes good power and this is probably my fifth or sixth one doing. So um, yeah, we really like them around here and uh, hey McLeod if you guys catch this awesome work saturday afternoon i was able to get the bell housing in last night as you can see here so what we need to do is make sure that the center of this bore is in the center of the crank or in the center of that pilot bearing and the way that we do that is what i did was stick a magnetic indicator on the clutch fingers here and then i spin the motor around with a ratchet while letting the dial press against this surface or the little pin press against this surface and that tells us if the center line there is in line with the center of the crank which means that the input shaft isn't pointing up down left or right so it's important to do that so you don't kill the inside of the transmission the bearings and the seal and everything and obviously you just want to make sure that you spend a whole bunch of money on this t56 magnum that you want to make it perfect so if it is way out they make offset dowels that you can buy and or have a local machine shop spin down what you have. Luckily for us, we were a thou and a half under the limit. So you're allowed five thousandths of an inch um, run out. So five thousandths of an inch, this is allowed to be off center. And we were only three and a half. So with that being said, being roughly half of the tolerance that they give you, we're gonna go ahead and install the transmission. Now, I have the transmission here. Let me show you, there it is. So the T56 is up. I do have my six speed lockout little adapter here on the bottom that locks into that webbing like I told you before. So this thing is ready now to take and put up in place. Now, the 3650 uh, that came out of it, as you can see over here, the bell housing is one piece with the transmission so you can't take that off now with the 56 you can so it should be a lot easier of an install because now all we have to do is get to these couple holes right here instead of reaching all the way up like this and trying to get those top two at the back of the motor so we're going to take this thing we're going to lift it up on the trans jack we're going to bolt it to the bell housing which are those six or eight little bolts that i just showed you and then we're going to go and they give us this new transmission mount so this transmission mount is much different than the one that came out of the car it's a fabricated piece and all i did here was kind of slip it together real loose so once it goes up in the car we'll be able to kind of loosely put it in place and i know the transmission's not falling out um, we got soccer today for the little guy so i don't have a ton of time but i'd like to get this thing set up into place and uh kind of holding itself there so Let's get to it so I can get to soccer and the wife won't go ahead and yell. Okay, so one more thing I do want to mention before we get this thing up into place is as you can see here, the shifter goes directly into the transmission now where the old 3650, it was remote mounted. The shifter kind of hung off the back end. So that is one other way to tell that this is a T56 compared to that one. And it'll make life a lot easier for us as we don't have to go ahead and try to wiggle with all of that um, shifter connection up on the top. So again, not detrimental by any means, but just something you should know that if you're gonna be doing this swap, it does require a different shifter. So if you have an MGW or something like we just pulled out of this car, it will not go on to this new transmission. You will need a new one if that's the shifter that you wanna run. So that being said, let's get it up into place. As you can see we got the transmission hanging up here now i just really loosely have the like eight bolts holding it to the bell housing we're going to go ahead and torque those to 40 foot pounds it is always a bear to try and get these transmissions through a twin disc clutch i mean the clutches are incredible but this is where you pay for it right here it uh took some choice words and a whole bunch of wiggling and finessing and in and out and back and forth and whatever but we got it in. So if you're doing this job and it's kind of fighting you, it's typical.
All right, so next we have our bag here that's been hanging. This is the line that goes up to the clutch master cylinder or the brake master cylinder since they share the same one. So what we're gonna do now, while the transmission is kind of pointed down, we haven't done the mount back here. Um, it's easiest to try and get that up in there now. Uh, there's a little bit more room than if you lift the ass end of the transmission up. So we're going to cut the zip lock off the bag. Um, as you can see, all I did here was punch a little hole and zip lock it to it. So we're gonna cut that guy off and then we are going to get the line back on. Now, this little clip right here, let's see if I can, there it is there. If you lose this clip, you are in big trouble. These are almost impossible to get now. So I do have a Dorman part number, um, the local parts store. Uh, I have a real good relationship with one of the people in there and she ended up finding this little thing for me It is not for this application if you look it up by the book, but it definitely does work This car has been running it for almost a year and I've used them plenty of times in the past so um, I will put the Dorman part number in the description below and I'll throw a picture of it up of it here in the video somewhere and uh yeah, hopefully if you lose this little thing, you can find this Dorman one that I found. I always have, a, I don't know, five or ten of them sitting around here in the shop just in case. So, anyways, don't lose the clip. We're going to throw that thing back on. Once that's done, we'll heck up the uh, wiring connections, and we're about ready to throw the transmission mount up. And it's in its new thing. <clears throat> now that we have the transmission up, we have the exhaust, as you just saw us, try to kind of slip that on and tighten it up, try to get the tips aligned as best we can. We can final tweak those once the car is back down on the ground. We're gonna go ahead and fill the transmission. So this says that it takes eight pints. Eight pints works out to just over four quarts or four liters. So what we're going to do is pull the fill plug there. I have a little, uh, like suction gun so you stick it down in the thing you suck it out into there stick it in the hole shoot it up and then you just keep continuing that i'll do it until there's about four quarts or four liters in there and then we'll check it all you want to do is fill it until just a little bit comes out the fill plug at that point boop, cap it back up and you're done so let's go ahead pull that plug and see what we can do As you saw, we just got the transmission fluid in the side of the transmission. I put my hand vac pump on the master cylinder to try and pull the air out. Feels like we have somewhat of a pedal right now. So what we're gonna do is try to do the first start and see if this thing will go forward and backward four or five feet. I'm not gonna go super far or anything. I just wanna see if it's going to move. Since it's super late, tomorrow we can take it out and go around the block. Now, car is on E85, so it may uh, stumble the first time you go to start it. Typical E85 thing. So, uh, yeah, don't be alarmed if it does that. Let's see what we get. to be moving go back to first go back to reverse you got to push it all the way to the passenger side and forward but you got to push it hard to click reverse into this thing
seems to be working okay. so it appears that we can move forward and backward with it no issues at all brakes seem to be working just fine so we know that um you know we didn't pop a hose off or anything on the back of the engine when the motor tipped back a little bit to get that trans in and out um so all we're gonna do now is we're gonna let this thing sit for the night tomorrow when uh you know it's light out and i'm not gonna get yelled at for driving a car like this around we will go and take it for a spin i'll bring you guys along and uh yeah hopefully that's it so that is the walkthrough of the install of a t56 magnum in an s197 like i said this one here is a 2010 so it still is the 4.63 valve but um so it makes close to a thousand horsepower i think it's nine something 930 or something but uh yeah anyways we'll take this thing out tomorrow and um didn't hear any noises or anything weird let's go take a nap and uh we'll get back up and take it for a rip around the block car works everything is good to go and the customer is coming to get it so that's probably all we're going to be seeing for that one for a little bit it will be back for some other upgrades you know, a bunch of suspension stuff but uh yeah for this round it is done so hopefully that helped you with your t56 magnum install in an s197 particularly that one was a three valve but it's basically the same for a coyote um, for all the steps that we just went through so hopefully that helped you out let's give a shout out to ms supply ms supply inc is the best nut and bolt and fastener and you know stuff like that little airline fittings whatever they are the best to get it from they are right outside of detroit and uh yeah that's where we buy all our stuff from so if you guys need stuff like that, you need a bolt bin set up, you need to get everything, you know, organized or whatever, call Robert and Corey and the gang over there and let them know 710 sent you. Anyways, have yourself a great day, great night, great evening, whatever. Most importantly, get out in your shop and do stuff.